A multi-day severe weather outbreak is likely across the Midwest and the Ohio Valley as we work into early next week, with the potential for significant severe weather being possible on Monday, including strong tornadoes for parts of the upper Midwest. Uh, meteorologist Brett Waltz with BAMWX.com here, uh, giving you a forecast update, breaking down the details that you need to know as we work into early next week. Let's take a look first at just a general idea of what we are dealing with as we get into next week. Here's an idea. The yellow area will be the area we need to monitor as we work into Monday and Monday night. That red area is where there could be significant severe weather potential, including strong tornadoes, uh, close to the warm front and the cold front as we work into Monday afternoon and Monday evening. The orange area is where storms will start to move to as we work into Tuesday afternoon and Tuesday evening evening. Taking a look here first at the Colorado State's experimental severe weather probability forecast here, guys, uh, that purple area and that hatched area that we see here across parts of eastern Iowa, western Illinois, southeast Minnesota, and into parts of Wisconsin. This is where it's indicating the highest probability of severe weather potential, including significant severe weather Potential. I'm certainly concerned, uh, given this signal and given the pattern setup that we'll look at here in a moment, uh, that there could be some strong tornadoes in this region, uh, kind of at the, 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 the triple point of the warm front and the cold front and the low pressure system as we get into late Monday afternoon and evening. Going into Tuesday, this threat will shift further down to the south and to the east in the Ohio Valley. Areas like Louisville, Indianapolis, Cincinnati, St. Louis will be at play for this. You'll note value's not quite as high, and I think that part of that is because the threat becomes a little bit more linear in nature, meaning that we could be dealing with a line of strong storms rather than individual supercells, a line of severe storms developing and kind of pushing off to the south and to the east as they move through late on Tuesday. Now, could there be some embedded supercells with this line? I don't think that's impossible. We'll touch on that here in a moment. Uh, let's take a look. This is the uh, new Synoptic Weather Platform. Uh, if you're looking for a weather model platform, guys, this is a fully interactive platform. You can zoom in anywhere, click around, uh, and look at all kinds of different forecast details. This is the beta version. It's free to sign up for at synopticwx.com. A really, really cool platform that I'm going to use to kind of highlight this severe weather threat as we get into next week. Uh, this is the European model, the zero-z run of the European model uh, as of uh, Friday morning. And you can see here that as we get into Monday evening, 8 p.m., you can see here in the bottom left, and I'll actually turn on here our time box so it's even easier to see in the top right. But uh, you'll note that the nature of these storms, it's a little bit more scattered and it's a little bit more supercellular in nature. So if we uh, turn on our drawing tool here, you can kind of see that all the way down through parts of the southern plains. You can see it all the way up near the low pressure system uh, where i'm most concerned about if we zoom in here it is kind of along the warm front that will be extending up here your cold front is back here and so this area is where just traditionally you get the most wind shear uh, you get kind of the pooling of dew points and naturally can have the highest tornado threat. If we take a look at some of the parameters, let's look at the dew point and watch how they surge in here. Uh, we're talking about dew points into the upper 60s across parts of Iowa. Uh, you can see that here, uh, mid to upper 60s, eastern Iowa, even up into southeastern parts of Minnesota. Uh, when you get dew points this high, this far north, it can certainly create a favorable environment for low cloud tops and the potential for tornadoes. But of course, you need instability, you need wind shear. If we take a look here, this is the unstable cape in the atmosphere. We have a, a lot of energy surging northward into parts of Iowa. Uh, and you're talking about 2,500 joules per kilogram of cape all the way up into southeastern parts of Minnesota and western uh, Wisconsin. And so plenty of instability with this. If we switch over to the GFS here, um, we'll go to the latest 6C run. Uh, if we look at the surface-based cape, uh, it's high, you know, all the way up into eastern Iowa. It's plenty of instability in here to create strong storms. And if we take a look at the helicity, the spin in the atmosphere, uh, pretty high here as well. And so we have a, a good combination. If I had to circle an area, in this region in here, good combination of instability, wind shear, 
plenty of moisture uh, to create a favorable environment for supercell thunderstorms and the potential for stronger, maybe even longer tracked tornadoes, uh, ba again, based off the current setup. We can also look at the supercell composite. You can already see that it's uh, fairly elevated even at this distance on the global models. You know, it's 90 hours out right now uh, in, in terms of kind of the core of this working through. So high resolution data will start coming out and getting into this period uh, later today and into tonight. So uh, a favorable environment here. Uh, another thing that we can look at, we can go back over to the European model. We can look at temperatures here. You know, temperatures surging uh, into the 80s across parts of eastern Nebraska, into the mid to upper 70s across eastern Iowa. Uh, you can kind of see here the, the main frontal boundary well off to the west in here. And so uh, uh, plenty uh, of moisture, plenty of temperatures getting up into the 70s. It should be a conducive environment uh, for this activity. And if we look at the upper level jet stream as well, uh, you can see this 500 millibar jet kind of right through central parts of Iowa and southern Minnesota. And a lot of times uh, the corridor of severe weather, it coincides with the strongest upper level jet streak, which you can see right through parts of Iowa and Minnesota. We can go up another level as well, and you can see the nose of this jet and actually a little bit of divergence. If you take a look at the wind barbs here, we've got winds going this way, winds kind of going this way, going this way. So strong upper level divergence in this region as well, which also tends to enhance tornado potential. So, uh, you know, I, I think that Monday could be a big day in terms of severe weather potential. If we go back to this, you know, a lot of what we drew on here kind of coincides what Colorado State's model has. Uh, Iowa, Minnesota, Western Wisconsin, Western Illinois especially, I think could be really in play for some uh, stronger tornado risk as we get into Monday. Uh, taking a look at the setup as we get into Tuesday. Now, a couple of things that you're going to note. Number one, your, your primary jet streak kind of stays a little bit further to the north. Now, we're still going to have some upper-level divergence. Just as a general rule, your upper-level divergence, we put a lacrosse here, tends to be in the uh, right entrance region through here. And so you're certainly going to favor a lot of upward motion and the potential for severe storms. But if you take a look at the 500 millibar jet, it, it kind of stays a little bit further to the north. So the environment not quite as conducive to those stronger tornadoes and more supercell type storms as we get into Tuesday. However, we still have a decent amount of wind shear. We still have a decent amount of instability that builds it. If we take a look at that, this is as, again, as we get into Tuesday, you can see here a, a good amount across the Ohio Valley of instability through here. In fact, to 2,500 to 3,000 uh, joules per kilogram of CAPE in here. So uh, storms are going to have plenty of instability to work with. We take a look at the helicity. It's not as strong. You can see not quite 200, but it's still there. There's still some wind shear. And so my expectation here as we get into uh, Tuesday afternoon and Tuesday evening, take a look, temperatures up into the 80s, is that, you know, this line of storms moves through. Let me go back to the 0 Z run. I think it represented it a little bit better. We get this line of storms to develop in the afternoon across Illinois, northern Indiana. Note how it's more of a line. And so the storms on Tuesday are a little bit more linear in nature. They're likely moving down to the south and to the east uh, with a more widespread damaging wind threat. But Tornadoes within that line, embedded within the line, embedded supercells will be possible uh, to produce what will likely be a, a severe weather uh, threat and more widespread severe weather activity on Tuesday. And so this orange area, 70 mile per hour wind gust possible, a few tornadoes, maybe not as widespread as Monday, and large hail as well, to include areas like St. Louis, Indianapolis, Evansville, Dayton, Cincinnati, and Columbus, and then those storms weakening a little bit further down to the south and to the east. So uh, that's a general overview of what to expect uh, as we get into Monday and Tuesday of next week, guys. Before we go here, guys, I did want to be sure to let you all know be sure to try out our platform. If you're a business, you're making high cost decisions, uh, go to the link that we've attached here in the description. Uh, you can do a free trial of our business or our ag packages, or if you just want it for personal use, uh, you can use Clarity Home. Our meteorologists will be actively 
updating videos for you, sending you nowcast updates, so kind of impending impactful weather updates uh, to help you stay safe through any kind of severe weather that we'll have upcoming. Be sure to go check it out. Thank you all for watching. We'll have more updates coming soon.